Okay, so this is screencast number two and we are continuing our Excel training session. So we have these two rows, two columns now with the data. And so let's now make this uh, third column, which is x square. So let's type it in x2 parenthesis m parenthesis closed. And now let's put this two as a subscript. Now, how do we do that? Well, you do it just as you do it in Microsoft Word. So, for example, let me double click here and let me select this number two, then right click on it. Format cells. So click on the format cells menu and this window comes out and here you can select superscript. OK, so if you collect select superscript, that number two appears on top. OK, so X square M. And by the way, M should also be square. So let's type in two there. So two, again, you select it, select this two, right click, format cells, superscript, and there you go. X square measured in meter square. Let's put a space in between like that. So, well, clearly, uh, x square is just x times x. Now we have a column with x. Now how do we make a column with x square? And here is where Excel becomes uh, very powerful. So let's type in the equal sign. Okay, so I'm going to type in equal. And now when you've typed equal, the Excel automatically thinks that you now will start typing in some mathematical formulas. Now, in our case, the mathematical formula is very simple. It's simply x times x. But instead of typing x times x, we will be selecting, we will be selecting a cell. Like, for example, this cell, x. So I'm going to select this cell, x, like that. So, as you can see, it says h3 here. So if you look at that cell, it is indeed an X, a cell H3. So the column is H and the row is 3. So H3 and then times, so I type in multiplication sign, times H3 again. So H3 times H3. Okay. So H3 times H3. Like that. H3 times H3 and you click enter and you get 4. You can in principle do exactly the same thing here. So you can type in equal and now select this one, which is H4, H4 times H4. And you get 16. Okay. Now, of course, it would be silly to do every single number like that because then uh, there's no point in using Excel. You can do the same thing on a calculator. In Excel, what you can do instead, if you, for example, select this cell again, like that, here in the functions on top, in the function uh, win uh, window, you see it says H3 times H3, okay? So you know what the formula looks like. The formula looks like H3 times H3. And then if you, on that cell, if you select that small square in the corner and select it and drag it down, it will do exactly the same calculations to all other cells. So, and you get this column. So, for example, if you click on this one where it says 400, if you click on that, and here in the window, you can see that it says H12 times H12. So, in other words, the Excel has calculated h12 that is this number times this number again now if you can't see where that where that cell is all you have to do is click here okay and then the cell which is being used in the formula is being highlighted with this blue box okay so it tells you which numbers it is using to calculate this 400 okay so let's click enter again like that so this is very useful now, you don't have to do the same kind of calculations over and over. You do it once here, and then you just drag it down, and it will reproduce exactly the same calculations for all other numbers. Now, here, in the original table, 
as you can see the numbers are written in the scientific notation. In other words, for example, this number, the first one is 4.0 E plus 00. So what does that mean? That means 4.0 times 10 to power 0. And this number here, for example, 2.56 times 10 to power 2. Okay, so this is a different notation than here. So here, it was simply with a decimal place, with a fixed number of decimal places. Here, it's fixed number of decimal places, but with a scientific notation. So how do we change our numbers to that format? Again, you select the area that you want to change. Okay, like that. Click, right click, format cells, go to number, and then instead of choosing number, you choose scientific. Okay, so here, scientific. And here, in the scientific notation, you can also change the number of decimal places. Well, in the original table, as you can see, the number of decimal places is 2. So we choose it to be 2 as well. Okay, so 2, okay. And there you go. Now your numbers are in scientific notation. Now, sometimes scientific notation is very helpful uh, when you deal with large numbers. So, for example, if your numbers are changing in orders of magnitude, say from one to a million, then, you know, if you're not using a scientific notation, then the table that you do becomes, you know, uh, a bit messy. So to make it more tidy, uh, it is better to use a scientific notation in that case. Okay, so let's go ahead and do now the fourth column, okay? So the fourth column is x over uh, y to the power of 5, which is measured in meters to minus 4. Okay, so let's type in the title of that column first. So x over y 5 parenthesis m minus 4 parenthesis closed, enter. Okay, so you can increase the, the column width by dragging this to the right. And let's put a space in between here, like that. So now let's make this 5 a superscript again so I select it right click format cells superscript and it's now made a power so now here m to minus 4 you do exactly the same thing you select it go to format cells and make it a superscript like that so the title is as it should be according to the original okay so then Let's write down the formula now. So again, we click on the first cell here. We type in equal sign. And then it says x over y to power 5. So x is this one. So I click on this, x. Okay. Divided by y to power 5. Now, in principle, of course, what you can do, you can open the parentheses and type in y times y times y times y times y and you have y to power 5 click parenthesis closed click enter and you get your number now that was easy because you had only power to you know uh, you, you, you only needed to do that only five times because it's y to power 5 but imagine that instead of 5 you have something like 4.6 or I don't know, a hundred. Then typing it in a hundred times or even 4.6 times, which is not possible, would be a problem using that method. So instead what you can do, you can type in equal sign again, x over, and then you go to, you, you type in the word power. Okay, so power, as you start typing in, you will see a window appears, okay, with all kinds of different functions whose name starts with P, okay? So then you type in O, and then the number of functions decreases, and there is your power function. So you can select it, like that, double-click, and there you go. So this, this is power. And then in the power, in the parentheses here, it suggests 
that the first number that you type in is the number that you want to raise to a certain power. Then you put a comma and then you put a number, the, the, the value of the power itself. Okay, so my number is Y. So I click on this cell and then I put a comma and then the power to which I should raise that number. And that power is 5. Click 5, close the parenthesis, click enter, and that's your number. And just as we did in the previous case, you select that cell, click on that square at the bottom, and drag it down. And it will do the same calculations to all other numbers. Now, if you want to double check it, click on any of them, for example, this one, and click here in the function menu and you see that it's been highlighted so this one is in blue and this one is in green so it says I'm taking the blue number and dividing it by the fifth power of the green number okay so this is exactly what we need So click enter and now you're sure that the calculation was correct now imagine how much time that would have taken you if you were to do that on a calculator here it was a split of a second Okay, so now we have to format it. So here the original table is again in scientific notation. So let's make this scientific notation as well. So we already know how to do that. We select this, right click, go to format cells, number, scientific. Now the difference is that if you note in, the, in this column, the number of decimal places is just one. Here it was two, so here it's one. So let's change this to 1. Okay, so 1. And now you have it in scientific notation with one decimal place. Now, of course, the functions that you, uh, that you may need when making a table, when you're doing a physics lab, are not simply powers. It's not like just multiplication and division. Sometimes you need to use more advanced functions like square roots, like a natural logarithm, like an exponent, trigonometric functions, and so on. In Excel, you have built-in functions of, you know, all mathematical functions, essentially. So, for example, let's say here, in, the, in this column, you need to have a logarithm of a square of x over y. Okay? So, let's type it in. Uh, so, well, let's first give it a title, proper title. Uh, a logarithm, parenthesis, square root. Now, how do you type in square root? Well, if you go to insert here, insert, and then here you have a symbol icon, so click on the symbol icon, and then you have this large table where you have all kinds of non-standard non -standard, uh, symbols. Now, this, the, the symbol that we need is a square, square root. So let's choose that one and click insert, okay? And then click close. So our square, square root uh, symbol is there now. So let's type in x over y and parenthesis closed, okay? So like that. Let's make it a bit larger, like this. And now let's type in the function itself. So this is equal to, so equal sign, and now we need to type in this logarithmic function. Well, how do we type it in? Well, there are two ways in which you can do that. First, if you go here, you see this fx, okay? So that's, a, that's, that's an icon that you can click, and it will give you all kinds of functions that are built into Excel. Okay, so let's click on it and this window comes out. So here you can choose the function that you want. 